into it here. All right, so today we're looking at related rates. We're going to do this in two parts, so you kind of get used to it. And uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a mix of some of the things that we've been doing already. Uh, but again, it's uh, much different. Uh, but again, uh, we're going to be taking derivatives. So example one here. Uh, a rock is tossed into the lake, creating a circular ripple to spread out from a point where the rock hit. The radius of the circle is moving out at a rate of 25 centimeters per second. Determine the rate of increase of the circumference of the circle with respect to time. All right, so the first thing with related rates is to figure out what you're actually looking for and what you actually know. Now, the first thing here is we've got a rock that's thrown into a lake and obviously the ripple is going out in a circular pattern. And what this is telling us is that the radius of the circle is moving out at a rate at 25 centimeters per second. Now, in terms of a related rate or a rate, and this is where I'm going to use uh, the other derivative notation uh, that we haven't quite used as much yet, and we are going to now. And so the radius of the circle is moving out at a rate at 25 centimeters per second. That's saying the change in my radius, so the derivative of my radius, with respect to time is equal to 25 centimeters a second. All right, now what it's asking for is determine the rate of increase of the circumference of the circle with respect to time. So what we're looking for here is dc, the rate and change of the circumference with respect to time. In other words, what is the derivative of the circumference with respect to time? And we don't know that. So now what we need is a formula that relates both C and R together and deals with the circle. And if you, uh, well, I have that formula sheet on Google Classroom, but the circumference of a circle is C equals 2 pi R. Now, the other thing is, is the 2 pi is just a number. And I could, in fact, sub that number in where I could have C is equal to uh, 2 times 3.14 is 6.28 R. Now, here's the difference in what we're going to do here. Is that now that I'm going to take the derivative, but I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to T. Neither one of them are T. And so I take the derivative of C with respect to T. Well, I get the derivative of C with respect to T. Now, 6.28, that's not uh, doing anything. It's just a number. And now I take the derivative of R with respect to T. Well, R is not T, so I just take the derivative of R with respect to T. And now it says, uh, find dc dt when we know dr dt equals 25. And so dc dt, the change in our circumference with respect to time, the rate of change, is equal to, well, I'm going to take my 6.28, and I'm going to multiply it by 25, which is the rate at which our radius is changing. And so that means dc dt, the rate at which our circumference is changing is, well, we're going to multiply here, uh, 6.28 times 25, and I get 157 right on. And the units here is the circumference is a distance, so we're changing at 100. And 57 centimeters per second. Or I can write, let's see if I got room here, uh, the circumference is increasing because it's a positive number at a rate of 157 centimeters per second. Now, we get to the next part. B, 
So all our values here are, are they the same. Yeah, they're the same. Okay. So now it says determine the rate of increase of the area of the circle when its area is 225 pi centimeters squared. All right. So in terms of our variables, we're looking at the change in the area. This is kind of the stuff they use for oil spills in the ocean. The, the, the rate of change in the area with respect to time. We want to know that. I'm leaving a little space here. We don't know that. Uh, when the area is equal to uh, 225 pi. Now again, uh, we know that the dr dt is still equal to uh, 25 centimeters a second. Now, what I'm going to look for here is a relationship between area and radius. And the area of a circle, again, if you're checking out that formula sheet that has all the uh, surface area and volume uh, of different shapes, well, the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Or again, uh, I could change pi to 3.14. Don't have to, but I'm just going to for now because I want to separate the numbers from the variables. All right, now what I'm going to do is take the derivative of both sides once again with respect to t. That's the difference here. We're not taking it with respect to the letter that we actually have. All right, so if I take the derivative of the area with respect to time, I get the derivative of area with respect to time. But then I have my... 3.14 here. All right, now to take the derivative of r squared. Now, this is where things get a little different. To take the derivative of r squared with respect to time, well, then it's going to be 2, bring the 2 down just like we do because we have a power now. We just don't have a variable by itself like we did here before, which is 2 pi r. We have this r squared. It's going to be bring the 2 down times the function right knock one off the exponents was just a one but then you have to times it by the function inside well the derivative of r with respect to t is dr dt now if it was just the derivative of r with respect to r it would just be 2r but it's not the case this is a lot like our implicit differentiation and also our composite functions all right, so now uh, we know dr dt. All right, uh, we know where we find da dt, and we just need to know r. So here's how we can find r. We have a formula over up here, area equals pi r squared, and we want to find the area when it's 225 pi, so I can find my r value that I'm going to need to sub in. So I got my area is 225 pi, is equal to pi r squared. All right, I can divide both sides by pi. And then I have r squared, r squared equals 25, 225. And if I square root both sides, r is 15. So in fact, we are trying to find the rate at which the area is changing with respect to time. When the area is 225 pi, which also meant for us, more importantly, that the radius is 15, because that's what we're going to need, apparently, in our formula. It doesn't always work out that way, but in this one, it did. All right, so now I can find the rate at which my area is changing with respect to time. All right, now it equals, let's see here, I got my 3.14 times 2 times my radius, which we found uh, to be 15 at this specific area time, our, the rate at which our radius is changing is still 25. All right, and now if I multiply those one, two, three, four numbers, let's see here, I get uh, 3.14 times two times 15 times 25, I get uh, 2,355. And so, what's going on here is that, well, the area 
is, again, it's a positive number, so the area is increasing. And if you've ever seen a rock hitting water, you know that the area is increasing. It's not shrinking. The circle's moving outwards. Uh, at a rate of 2,355, uh, area is centimeters squared per second. And there we go. All right, let's try uh, a couple more of those, that's for sure. Takes a little while to get used to these. Again, a little bit different. Okay, so uh, example two. Uh, the volume of a spherical balloon is increasing at a rate of 10 cubic centimeters per second. How fast is the radius increasing when the radius is 15 centimeters? Okay, so in terms of the information we have, First sentence, the volume of a spherical balloon is increasing at a rate. We're talking about the volume, the rate of the volume, with respect to time. We know it to be 10 cubic centimeters a second. And what we're looking for is how fast is the radius increasing? So we're looking for our dr dt, the rate at which the radius is changing, with respect to time when, so put a line here, r is equal to 15. All right, so I need a formula that relates volume and the radius together. And again, with that formula sheet, uh, we're talking about a spherical balloon, a sphere, and the volume of sphere is v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. All right. Now, because I'm doing rates, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. I'm just going to leave pi alone this time out because hopefully I've uh, illustrated that it is just a number. So I uh, take the volume with respect to time. Well, I get the volume, the derivative of volume with respect to time. Now, our numbers here, well, 4 thirds pi, I'm just going to write that down. The number's not going to change. But now I'm going to take the derivative of r cubed with respect to t. That's the difference here. Now, if it was just with respect to r, it would be 3r squared. But because it's not, it's with respect to t, it's still going to be, bring the 3 down, times r squared using the chain rule. But then I take the derivative of inside the function, because again, it's like there's a function inside. Uh, we just don't know what it is, so we are going to take the derivative of that function with respect to time, and that function is r, so the derivative of r with respect to t. All right, now let's make sure we got everything we need. We have dv dt. Uh, we do know the r value this time. We don't have to go figure it out, and so we can find dr dt. All right, so, uh, whoops, I'm gonna just simplify things when we can here. So I got a three in the top here and a three in the bottom, so we'll divide those two out. There we go. All right, so now to substitute in, well, your dv dt is 10 equals, uh, I got 4 times pi, let's put that in there, uh, times r squared there, and I found out r was, or I didn't find out, it told me that r was 15, r squared, and we are looking for our dr dt. All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, just going to simplify things here, uh, take, well, you know what, I'm just going to divide both sides here by 4 pi, 15 squared, by the way, is 225, so I might as well put that in there. All right, and what I do to one side, I do to the other, so I got 4 pi times that 225. So we're going to get a really small number here. And in fact, uh, I take 10, I divide it by 4 pi, then I divide it by 225, and I would find out that our radius is changing at a rate of 0. Uh, 0.0035. Our units are centimeters and our times in seconds. And so, uh, again, the, in this case, uh, the radius is, again, it's a positive number. I hope I have a negative one in here somewhere. Increasing uh, at a rate of 
0 0.0035 centimeters per second. And there we go. All right, now we're going to step it up here and get a little more complicated. All right, so here we go. Uh, two cars uh, approach a right-angled intersection, one traveling south at 40 kilometers an hour and the other west at 70 kilometers an hour. Uh, when the faster car is four kilometers from the intersection, the other car is three kilometers from the intersection. How fast is the distance uh, between the two cars changing? Okay, so first thing is I'm going to try to draw a diagram here. So two cars are approaching a right angled intersection. All right, so I'm going to create an intersection here. Uh, one's traveling, where are we going here? South, one's traveling west. All right, so I'm going to put a dot here. And uh, there's my intersection. I guess I'll put a big eye there. All right, now, one is traveling south. So uh, I'll have this person right here traveling south. Put a little arrow. And they're going uh, 40 kilometers an hour. Whoa. 40 kilometers an hour. Not easy to write small. All right, and the other is traveling west at 70 kilometers an hour. There we go. So this person is going 70 kilometers an hour. All right, and uh, now we have a distance between them. So at this, there's a dot here, wherever this person is, and over to here. That's where this person is. Now it says when the faster car is four kilometers from the intersection, Okay, so right here we have a four kilometers. And the other car is three kilometers away from the intersection. Uh, we want to know at what rate, it, how fast is the distance between them changing? So uh, our distance is that green line. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I guess I'll label over here that's why because it's changing I don't know it's three kilometers I want to know how fast it's changing uh, this is X this distance from here to here all right now what we got going on here is that what we're looking for is how fast the distance is changing so we are looking at DD the, the rate at which the distance is changing with respect to time uh, when uh, we have an x value of 4, all right, and our y value happens to be 3. Now, we also know some other stuff here, uh, the speeds. Now, the y distance, well, we'll start with the x here. Now, this person's moving towards the intersection at 70 kilometers an hour, and that means the rate at which the x distance is changing with respect to time is equal to, well, it's getting smaller at 70 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to put a minus 70 because it's decreasing. In the same way, I've got dy dt. The other person's uh, driving, what's it, skating, driving at the intersection of 40 kilometers an hour. And again, because it's driving towards the intersection, it's going to be minus 40 because that distance is decreasing. And so I've got three variables here. I've got this y distance is changing constantly, this x distance is changing constantly, uh, which means that d is changing. Now I'm going to come up with a relationship between d, x, and y. And that relationship, well, I'm going to use the old Pythagorean theorem, where I have d squared is equal to x squared uh, plus y squared. Now again, that is the Pythagorean theorem. Now I'm going to have to take the derivative of each one of these pieces with respect to time. So we'll just draw that in there in blue. All right, so I'm going to take the derivative, but again, the derivative of every single variable is with respect to time, not the variable itself. So I'm going to have to take the derivative of d squared, the derivative of x squared, 
and the derivative of y squared. And that's the difference today is that we're taking it, the derivative of each of these to, uh, with respect to a variable that is not it. Now, the derivative of d squared, again, i got to use the chain rule. 2 times d, but then I have to take the derivative of that function inside, and that derivative is d, so i got to take the derivative of d with respect to time. And in a similar fashion, taking the derivative of x squared. Well, I take the derivative of x, x squared, but then I got to take the derivative of x. Well, I don't know the derivative of x, so I, with respect to time, of course, so I have dx dt. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, where I have 2y squared, or sorry, 2y times the derivative of y with respect to time. Now, uh, let's see here. What information do I have? Uh, I have dy dt. Uh, I know the y value I'm trying to find this out at. Uh, I know dx dt. I know the x value that we're looking for. Uh, I'm trying to find dd dt. Ah, I'm missing d. All right, well, I can go back up. I have an equation here. I know the x and the y. And so if I sub, sub those in, uh, what was x? 4, so I got 4 squared. y was 3, so I got 3 squared. Now if I take those, uh, 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, add them together is 25. But then I have to take the square root. It looks like d in this situation is 5. All right, so again, I use my original equation there. So sometimes you have to sub in, sometimes you do not. All right, so now I am going to sub in all my information. So I got 2 uh, times 5 uh, times, uh, I'll get that in there, that d, 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 t is equal to uh, 2 times x, which is 4 now. Uh, the rate at which x is changing is a minus 70 because it's decreasing. All right, plus 2 times y, which in y now we're looking at when it's 3, and dy dt is a negative 40. All right, and again, the whole point is here we're finding the rate at which the distance is changing with respect to time. All right, so uh, let's see here. Simplifying things. Well, 2 times 5 and 0 is 10, so I get 10 times dd dt. All right, equals uh, 2 times 4 times negative 70 is actually uh, negative 560. All right, then I get 2 times 3 times negative 40. I get negative 240. All right, so, uh, well, before I even do that, uh, I'm going to divide both sides by 10 just so I can get dd dt by itself. And uh, the derivative of distance with respect to time, or the rate at which the distance is changing with respect to time, I've got uh, minus 560 minus 240 is minus 800. I can do that right in my head. Divided by 10, and you end up getting minus 80. Which then tells us, first time I got a minus there, I was hoping I did that, uh, that the distance... It, uh, between the cars is decreasing at a rate of 80 kilometers an hour. And uh, you could also say when uh, x is equal to 4, because this is only when that, uh, that rate works, and uh, y is uh, equal to 3. And there we go. So a little again, Pythagorean theorem showing up. All right, I got one more here, a little bit different. Again, we're going to do a couple of days of these, just to get used to them. Okay, uh, it says, example four, a student who is 1.6 meters tall walks directly away uh, from a lamppost at a rate of 1.2 meters per second. A light situated eight meters above the ground on the lamppost 
a light is situated eight feet. All right. Find the rate uh, the student's shadow is lengthening when she is 20 meters uh, from the base of the lamppost. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw a little diagram here. Uh, let's see, so we've got somebody walking along, so and then uh, do a little light post. <laughs> There's our light post. When I put a little yellow in there, make it a little more realistic. There we go. All right, now we have uh, a person here. She's right there. All right. Now she is 1.6 meters tall, so that doesn't change. Uh, the lamppost is eight meters above the ground. That's not gonna change. And let's see here, we have a shadow being cast. So I guess the light shines and your shadow will go from the length of your top of your head all the way down. All right, um, and so I guess we have the distance between the lamppost and the girl is X. And so I'll put a line here. That's our X distance. And then uh, our Y distance, I guess, will be the shadow, which is on the ground, by the way. I've had many students not know where your shadow is. It's not on the wall. I guess it could be on the wall, but in this situation, there's no wall around. It's on the ground. All right. So what we want to know is, let's see here. I'm going to read the question again. So I'm just trying to get anything uh a student walks away from the lamppost at a rate of 1.2 meters per second. So that's our X value there that we're talking about. She's walking away from lamppost. So that means DX, the rate at which X is changing with respect to time, that distance is changing at a rate of 1.2 meters per second. All right, what we want to do is find the rate the student's shadow is lengthening. So we're talking about Y here, her shadow. We want to know dy dt, the rate at which the shadow is changing, uh, when she is 20 meters from the lamppost. So that's talking about our x value. So that's when x is equal to 20. All right. So uh, I need a relationship here. If I'm going to find dy dt, I need a relationship between x and y in this situation. And what I'm going to use is similar triangles because, well, they have this common angle right here. Uh, they have this common 90 degree angle. They're both standing upright, which means uh, these angles are equal. So we can use similar triangles. All the angles are equal. All right, now to use similar triangles, uh, the small triangle, I'm gonna take this 1.6 side and divide it by the bottom of the triangle, which is our y. And that's going to be equal to, because matching side ratios are equal to similar triangles. And so I'll look at the height of the lamppost and compare it to the height of the person. Well, it's 8. But then I have the length around the bottom of the triangle. So the bottom of the smaller triangle is y, but the bottom of the bigger triangle is x and y, or in math terms, x plus y. And again, this is using similar uh, triangles. That's how I come up with that relationship. All right, so I didn't have to use my formula sheet for once. Uh, now, before I take the derivative of either side, what I'm going to do here is, well, I have a fraction equaling a fraction, so I'm going to cross multiply to simplify things first. So I'm going to have a 1.6 times x, uh, then I have the 1.6 uh, times y. I have to multiply both of them. And on the other side, I'm going to have y times 8, or 8 times y. All right, uh, well, I can further simplify because I'm going to drag this 1.6 over to the other side so it becomes negative. All right, so I'm going to have a 1.6x on this side and then over on that other side I'll have 8y minus a 1.6y which gives me a 6.4y. Alright, uh, I guess I could divide both sides but I, does 6.4 get divided by, ah, I'll just leave it. I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm ready. I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. Now again, the 1.6 ain't going to change. 
Uh, I take the derivative of x with respect to t. Well, that's just the derivative of x with respect to t. All right, same thing on the other side. The number doesn't, not going to change any. Uh, but then I take the derivative of y with respect to t. Well, that's just the derivative of y with respect to t. No change, chain rule involved because our exponent is just a 1. All right, now uh, I know a dx dt, right? Uh, I want the dy dt. Perfect, I got everything I need. All right, so I'm going to substitute in now. So I got, uh, let's see here, 1.6 times dx dt, which I now know is 1.2. And uh, I have a 6.4 uh, times r dy dt. And uh, let's see here. Uh, well, I'm going to get dy dt by itself. All right, and so I'm going to divide both sides by 6.4. What I do to one side here, I got to do the other. All right, so those 6.4s divide each other out. And then dy dt is going to equal 1.6 times 1.2 uh, divided by 6.4. And I end up with uh, 0 0.3. All right, so what uh, does, we we're talking about meters per second here. And so that means we're talking about the shadow lengthening which it is because they're walking farther away, it looks like. And so the shadow, whoops, I need some small writing here. The shadow uh, is lengthening uh, at a rate of 0 0.3 meters per second uh, when, uh, when x is 20 meters. I'm going to get to actually. And there we go. Now, something about this x equals 20 meters. Notice that I wanted to find dy dt when x equals 20, but it, when it came down to substituting our values in, I never used that x. And the reason for that is because it doesn't matter how far this uh, girl is from the lamppost the rate at which her shadow is lengthening doesn't depend on how far away she is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't depend on that. So if she's 40 meters away, 20 meters away, 30 meters away, given this situation, the rate at which her shadow is lengthening will be the same, no matter how far away she's from the lamppost. That's what that's telling us. So sometimes you have to sub a value in. In this case, you had to not sub a value in. And sometimes you have to, in a, lot of, or a couple of our examples, you had to find another value using your original equation to sub in. So there's a bunch of different um, situations you can have there.